it is 5 p.m. Let me make sure it's loading over here. We are live with Chilla, who is an amazing fitness professional. Um, Chilla is originally from Hungary in Europe, and this summer it's going to be her 20th year living on the western slope of Colorado. So, Chilla, tell me a little bit more about yourself. I know that you have a master's degree and that you know a whole lot about fitness and you want our kids to be moving, but tell me more about yourself. How did you get there? <laughs> Well, thank you for having me today. So yes, uh, it was it's a long story. Let me try to make it short. I was always interested in physical education. My parents were very active. My mom was in track. My dad was in in uh, uh, basketball, college level. So we were always active. But um, ever since I was a young kid, I wanted to be a physical education teacher because I love PE and I really love to play. That was my favorite thing to do. So um, I, that that did become reality and I did become a PE teacher. I have a master's degree in physical education. So ever since that, ever since I was young, I was interested in fitness and the health came to it a little later. Um, I, as I said, I was an athlete. I was in track. I was a national champion. We started to go to European champions, championships. And then at one point, uh, I just thought it was my decision. I stopped it. I stopped everything overnight. Literally, I woke up and I thought, no, oh, I want to do something else. You know, when you're 20 and you have these great ideas, <laughs> but your life is just going great. And then you decide, oh, I want to do something else. It's okay. That was 25, 23 years ago. So I'm not going to worry about it anymore. But that's when, you know, I went from training an hour and a half to two hours a day and then meet on the weekends to not train and not do, not do that. And then also before college, I helped a lot with my parents business they had a vineyard so i worked very hard physically too to help them wherever they needed to help so all of a sudden i am in college i am free i don't uh, train anymore i don't work physically as hard anymore even though it was a uh, hungarian university of physical education so we had plenty of physical activities all of a sudden everything changed and i gained weight so i thought whoa that's strange i never i never had to deal with that before i never never knew that people had problems with gaining weight or losing weight. I was just a healthy, happy kid with a good childhood. And all of a sudden I gained a lot of weight. I don't remember, probably it was in kilograms. I would say 15, so 32 pounds or so, all of a sudden overnight. Wow. So I had to figure out how to get out of that weight. And I didn't have any idea. So I just started to do the same what everybody else does. I started a diet, you know, I thought, oh, I'm not gonna eat. I'm just gonna eat lettuce then i that worked for a while then it didn't then i thought oh i'm gonna try the curry cheese diet and then i will try to run a lot and so i just randomly picked um just new feeling diet. ideas ideas that really don't work diets that didn't work I, I don't believe that in diets at all by now finally i learned my lessons so i failed so many times and i gained weight and i lost weight and i looked good and i was athletic and i wasn't I always stayed active. I always stayed active. I, I love sports. I play, I play sports until this day and I'm going to be 43 in a month. So I stayed active. That never changed. I started hiking, camping, backcountry, uh, skiing, whatever you can imagine, soccer, tennis, everything I'm involved until this day. So I'm being a mom. <laughs> yeah, and just being a mom, and I have three kids on top of it, but that's plenty. So as soon as I start to get closer to uh, age 30, I started to figure things out. However, I started, I got pregnant. So it's finally when I figured out how to do this, but I failed a lot. As I said, I was still wasn't sure. I had three kids in nine years. So I was either pregnant or breastfeeding or, or majorly sleep deprived. So my motivation was really low. My hormones were as mixed up as they can be. So all of a sudden from like, oh, I'm figuring this out. I'm getting in shape. I, I stay in shape. And then all of a sudden I have three pregnancies, hormonal changes. By the time I woke up from that, I was getting, let's see, my my little daughter is six and she was born in, 30, in 2013. So yeah, so I was probably at 36, you know, at 37 when I started to have enough sleep that I could finally think of myself again. As I said, even during the pregnancies, during the, the baby years, I always stayed active. However, I struggled with after my third child with the weight a little bit. But at that point, I really uh, had a good idea 
of, of how the body works and what does it need. So as I was getting closer to uh, 40, my hormones changed too. You know, you, you start to gain weight. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, you work out for a week and then if you take a week off, that muscle goes away. So it's different for if, if you're young and you're listening to this, it's totally different. When I was 20 and I was just running around and playing volleyball on the beach or no problem. <laughs> I, I, I literally could lose five pounds in a day just playing all day, some kind of sport, yeah. but it was different. And plus, once I was getting closer to age 40, I was really trying it hard to stay in shape because it was harder to stay in shape when you had a 20. So I started to get little injuries. So I thought, oh, I still really have to dial this in, finalize what exercise is good for a human body and for me, what diet is good because I was done. I, after 20 years of experimenting and failing over and over again, I thought, okay, I just want to know. I just want to know how this works. And, and at that point, I had enough knowledge and, and my husband helped a lot. He, his dad was Mr. America in like 1950s. So he had a fitness background too, and he's very much interested in nutrition. So he's the family nutritionist. He knows every single thing about nutrition and the science behind it. He just interviewed somebody about on YouTube, a big YouTuber about the nutrition, the little intricate details of, of protein and the sugar breakdown so he, he together we kind of figured this out throughout the years so in in 2000 and uh, let's see my second son was born in 2010 so in 2009 he wrote an ebook called sexy fit and that was all about fitness and health about that time we were vegan so it was focusing kind of on that a little bit on vegan diet and then last year he wrote another ebook called uh, health fit self and that uh, focuses more on uh, weight loss and really the science behind how can you get in the best shape of your life and how can you stay in the best shape of your life so and everybody wants to know who's watching so how can we stay in the best shape of our <laughs> lives <laughs> well it's simple it's really simple it's just so the information out there is so confusing about it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, and it's so much information that I think they're bombarded with, with the information. We forget about the basics and the simplicity of it. And we overcomplicate it and we fail so many times that it's just hard to be even get interested in this subject again. And then we just kind of give up, give it up overall. So the simplicity comes from going back to the, to the basics how can you be, become in your best shape and stay in that shape the bottom line is if you have an image in mind if you have a goal in mind of what you want to look like and how much you want to weigh you can easily easily get to that point you just have to know the science as we as you just asked so the secret is that there are no secrets you have to eat a little less the solar portions you less calories you have to stay active and and a few more other things but most importantly it's really is about watching your calories like even if you in the past like 10 years ago i went to a really healthy um time of my life and i thought it's all about how healthy you eat how about if you eat enough salads and if you just eat organic and i tried that i went to the healthy movement and that was great but you know a slice of multi-grain bread or a rye bread has way more calories than like a regular slice of bread. So, so that I gained weight on the healthiest diet. And I thought, okay, how can I, I'm so healthy. How can I gain weight? So you always, you have to watch your calories. You, you need to know how much calories you eat. You need to know your basic metabolic rate. What is, what if just from breathing and, and sweating and walking, go to work and taking a shower and how much uh, just sleep during sleep, you use energy. How much energy do you use uh, during the day? And then from there, you can build up this, this whole science around, okay, then how much if I, if I go in the gym on top of it or, or, or how much calories do I need to eat? to keep my weight, gain weight, or lose weight. Most of the people, especially women, they are trying to lose weight. Now, if you, if you want to lose a pound, a pound of fat a week, a pound, a pound generally, then you have to eat 500 calories less a day. So if you eat 500 calories less a day, in seven days, uh, you will eat 3,500 calories less in a week. That means you're going to lose a pound. 
of weight. Now we would like to lose a pound of fat and not muscle, right? So there are a couple other things that come in. The next thing is exercise. But it's definitely the nutrition first. People decide to, well, they want to become in shape and then they said, oh, I'm going to start to run. And they start to run. <laughs> and do that all the time. To do that to do HIIT classes or Zumba. And that's wonderful. It's great. It, it's really good. It will help you. But unless you watch the nutrition, your calories, then you, won't, then you won't understand, but how come I run every day and I still gain weight or why am I not losing weight? But the reason is that because at, at 8 o'clock when you're sitting in front of the TV, you eat uh, two handful of, let's say, peanuts, and one-fourth of a cup of peanuts has about 180 calories. So two handfuls, if you just eat a little bowl, right, just a little bowl, it won't hurt you, it has like 600, 700, 800 calories. So you have to be aware of what you are eating and how much of that you are eating. So keeping the serving sizes small and know what you're eating is number one. And then the fitness part is coming in. But I see you want to ask something. Yes, let me ask you because I find it challenging to keep track. So there are a ton of apps out there. What would you yes. advise the best way to keep track? Journaling or, and it's also sometimes hard to, because I didn't realize how much I ate until I started writing it down. I will tell you that. I did not realize how much I ate oh. every day, especially with oh. everything we're going through right now. We're at home all day. The refrigerator oh. is right here. We have. <laughs> We, you know, we all stocked up with food <laughs> and it's like we went through our reserves so quickly because we yeah. get, I stress eat, you know? And so yeah. these are anxious times. It's very uncertain. We don't know what's going on. And I want to keep positive all, all the time. So I just, when I'm stressed, I eat. So what would you advise? Like, how do I keep track of that food? And like stress eating is such a big problem. Yes, it is. I agree with you. That's what I hear from other parents and, or, or just generally from men and women, other adults, and even kids. You know, we, the kids do what they watch the parents do. Yeah. So I see a lot of kids sitting at home eating all day, and that's not a good example. So uh, we want to break that habit. So the best thing, there are many, many uh, apps out there that you can use. It's, we are so spoiled. Uh, you can mm -hmm. check out Lose It or any other one, but I use is My Fitness Pal. My Fitness Pal is super simple. Yeah. It's a free app. The basic functions are free. And then if you really are going into macros and, and really get into it once you really see results, then you can purchase it for just went up, I think, $79 for a year or something like that. So it's still affordable for because it will bring a huge change in your life. So I recommend My Fitness Pal. You go in there, you put your weight in there, you put your goal weight in there and how fast you want to lose weight. Because if you want to lose it in a pound, you know, as I said, I, I recommend to lose a pound a week, a maximum of a pound and a half. If you want to lose, let's say 10 pounds, in, then you can do it in 10 weeks. But if you want to lose that 10 pounds because you have a wedding coming up or you want to look great in five weeks for a beach, then you have to lose more. But then you have to restrict a thousand calories a day. That's a, it's a whole new bargain. So what you can do, but I recommend people, especially if they haven't used the My Fitness Pal uh, until now, is to go in there, put your weight, put your ideal weight. It will show you how much calories they recommend per day and then st start to track what you eat. And then you will be shocked because what you think is he healthy and just a little bit has 200 calories and something that you eat a lot of and you thought, oh, I will be fat tomorrow because I eat this has like 50 calories. In. So I, I love the like example salsa. of the nuts yeah, because I do that all the time. I'm like, oh, it's not chips. It's healthy, but it's a ton of calories. <laughs> yeah, it's, the best example is salsa or guacamole. Salsa barely has any calories. You can eat salsa all day long and you will be fine. Guacamole, just a, just a tablespoon of it has like, I don't know, 140, 60, something like that calories. So, you know, it's just a little change, these little, little decisions we make. Oh, should I, first of all, chips, crazy, crazy heavy in calories. So you won't believe once you put that down that you ate, I don't know, 10 chips and it's 150 calories. You're like, what? Just, I just ate 10 chips. I, I just warmed up. <laughs> I'm not even I just actually enjoyed the chips. And you already had 150 calories. And if you want to lose a pound a week, you really want to drop the calories 500 calories a day. And 150, you just ate in 10 chips. So that's the best to do. Start to start to put everything in the in the My Fitness Pal. 
that will show you exactly what you do right and what you do wrong because all of a sudden the really heavy calorie dense foods will jump out and you will be like oh i better eat half of this instead of the whole thing because the whole thing is 800 calories or or i make homemade bread the homemade bread super heavy a slice of it 220 calories i used to eat four or five pieces oh it's just so yummy it's so warm it's so fresh now I'm making sure that, okay, a one piece is good, a little butter maybe on it, but I already know if I put a tablespoon of butter, that's this much. If I put olive oil on it, that's another thing. The oils, the oils are very, very dense, very calorie dense. So you have to be very careful with how much oil you sprinkle on your salad because the oils can alone, oils and nuts, nuts are the other ones. My my brother-in-law, he used to eat sunflower seeds on the way to work and back and because he was asking us, what do I do wrong? I'm like, well, how, much, how, many, how much sunflower seeds do you eat? I'm like, why? Sunflower seeds are healthy, aren't they? Like everybody says they're healthy always. So start to track at my fitness pile and you will see it right away. And then you put it in when do you want to lose and how much that will help you. There are other factors that come in that my uh, husband talks in his ebook, The Health of Itself. It tells you in 80 pages exactly how to do that. What are the little things that you can you can change like, you know, if it's too hard for a lot of people, seven days, 500 calories, it's, it's very hard, really very hard. Emotionally, it tests them. So what he recommends is to have a refeed day once a week when you maintain your calories. You don't go over your calories, but instead of dropping 500, just eat that two piece extra bread to kind of for your soul, for your, for just so you don't feel like you are just hurting yourself. So he recommends the refeed days once a week and then instead of seven days, you will lose a pound in every eight days. So there are lots of tricks that he talks about for pages and pages. <clears throat> that's number one, start to track it. And that's what I tell everybody who's at home right now. Please just track, just see what you eat because you won't believe what you are eating right now with all the stacked up food. That's oh, number one. And, and I totally misunderstood reset day because, okay, I have a big problem with Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> so bread with butter and Nutella, that's kind of my jam. So I would be like, oh, reset day. This is my Nutella sandwich. But instead of just one, it would be two. Or it would be on the fresh white baked bread that you were talking about. The one full of butter, nice and flaky, oh, or croissant. Oh my, my goodness. God. And so when I started tracking that, I was like, oh, I don't think that's the goal of reset day. <laughs> Nutella is unbelievable how many calories. I know I used to I used to be able to literally the jar. I was when I was in my eating disorder ages when I just tried to lose weight and then I couldn't control myself. I was just eating it by the spoonful. So my Nutella sister is, used to do that in the closet. She would have put a step in the pantry and eat it out of the jar. So people <laughs> no Nutella. <laughs> No, 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 not, not, not butters, you know, not, they are healthy. I'm not, I think big variety is important. So I, I think these diets of eat only cottages or eat only grapefruit or only, I don't know what the people come up with. I think that variety is very important, but serving sizes are important. Knowing the calories, what you eat is important. And, and then comes the next step, what my husband talks about in his book of like, okay, so how much protein do I eat and how much fat? So once you see what you eat once you chart it then you will have the questions so people usually jump on diets they are i want to look like this i want to lose weight and they start to do all these things when they don't even understand what they are doing they, and they don't have questions that too many questions and no questions all of a sudden i say always no step but what step to one thing at a time start to chart it see where you are at now and then have a question we'll right away we'll have a question of like oh so should I eat salsa or guacamole? Then, then you, because you know what to ask instead of just copy somebody's great diet idea that maybe worked for that person, maybe worked for six weeks, but maybe not for 10. This, this, this has to end the dieting, the, 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 the women trying to get skinny. And then they usually either get skinny fat or, 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 or not using weight and then gain it back because this dieting society needs to end. I, I think there, there is an easy, simple solution. It's just, uh, it's just sometimes people get a little lost because they just I get so excited. It's, it's, it's not because they don't want to lose weight. It's just so much information. They find something, they get excited. And then it's not that 
it's simple and it's not it's easy but still you have to put the work in you have to you have to say okay i'm just gonna have one piece of bread and that's just the one part the other part as i started to talk about is the fitness part so the two goes together because if you say you can you can actually get skinny on eating nutella only so if you eat a if you know if you count the calories yes. you know, <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> here's the good news you can get skinny if you know how much you want to lose how much calories how many how much less calories you have to eat a day and you eat only nutella you will lose that weight i guarantee yeah. you you will, you will. It's, it's really not the nutella's fault that we, we have that it. no 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 <laughs> so so that's the good news but you know you don't just want to eat nutella you will miss out on minerals and vitamins and then you maybe you won't be able to build your muscles you know that's the second part if you the, the building muscle is number one importance that's why people go out and do their things and what i did i already did cardio and i got really skinny but i was this cardio skinny person that didn't have a muscle tone i wanted to be strong and feminine but i was just the skinny little things most of the time when i'm not like when i wasn't overweight so i had to learn that lesson and I, that's why i'm here that's what i'm trying to teach to people to to, to a new paradigm a new thinking of what healthy and fit is because what healthy and fit is is not these skinny ladies who are photoshopped and makeup and and plastics over you know with, with surgeries healthy and fit is when you have a strong body when you have muscle tone when you when you are not overweight when your mind is healthy and your body and your soul overall you are healthy so as i said you started with the calories then you you try to uh, do workouts now the workout for i recommend a two two kind of workouts weightlifting i that you can't avoid weightlifting i don't care if you are 20 if you're if you're a professional athlete or if you've never done anything you won't be able or you are 60 you won't be able to avoid weightlifting even pro athletes who are who are olympic style olympic level athletes they do weightlifting as well they don't just practice their swimming all day long or their jumping or whatever or biking they go to the gym and work on certain aspects certain parts of their bodies that have to be balanced out or not strong enough because if they swim a lot with their arms they have to do weightlifting to train their to do their legs make it stronger so the weightlifting is unavoidable especially when you're getting older it's it's just science shows it over and over again how good it is for bone density and and numerous reasons the reasons why i like it that's what i do weightlifting and cardio but let's talk about weightlifting first is because it builds muscle and I love muscle. I love the muscle tone. I, I love it when I when I'm not just a skinny arm girl. That's skinny. I, I don't like skinny anymore. I like healthy looking, strong, feminine bodies or manly if they are men. I and I think weightlifting gives you that the curves, the the tone, the leanness what you need. Now the leanness actually comes from cardio. So the, the other the reason I I recommend cardio as well because cardio we do cardio to burn fat not sure it's good for the heart sure it's a, it's healthy it's a good habit it's a relaxing to go on a run but the number one reason why i recommend cardio is for losing fat losing weight but losing fat specifically my friend he's a runner and he wants to gain muscle and he picked up running recently i thought man go for a run that's what you are that you relax your mind and now i and i saw him picking up running and i thought oh He's doing too much running. If you want to gain muscle and you want to change your body composition, too much cardio will actually take your gain away. Gains away. So that's another thing my husband talks about in his book, The Health of Yourself, that how much cardio, how much weightlifting, what kind of exercises. The number one for fitness, and you can interrupt anytime because I'm just keep talking. So number one for fitness, if you have something you love, if you're a tennis player, a soccer player, if you like to play, play basketball, play that. That's the most important thing. Like, I don't think everybody needs to rush to the gym. They need to at one point or one part, one point of their week. But if you have something going on with friends or alone or you're playing racquetball, that's the best. You will have so much fun. But you also have to substitute with weightlifting. And if you want to lose weight or we want to stay lean, you have to do some cardio. So what do we do now that we're stuck home and we can't go to the gym? Oh, that's the big question. That's why I am coming out with videos. Uh, you can go to Best Babe 007. That's my YouTube channel. And I am I am hard on people. People sometimes tell me, stop telling me to not watch Netflix and get off the couch. 
but that's what we need to do. So what we need to do, in my opinion right now, is really somehow change your, change your mindset right now. Everybody's at home, eating up their food supplies, watching the news, in total stress, total fear mode, gaining weight, so they start to feel worse about themselves because they are panicking about that on top of it. So what I'm saying is, in my opinion, when, when I, I, I did that too. When this news came out, I watched the news and I never watched the news. And literally, I became depressed and I'm never depressed. I'm a very positive, very happy person. And I had to sit down, I prayed through a week and I thought, oh wow, what, what am I gonna do? So for me, the number one thing what changed this situation is to turn the news off. I thought, okay, I'm not gonna be controlled by this. I cannot control that. The smart people are trying to figure this out. I have my theory of what's going on, but it's really not my business. It's not my, it's not my business right now. The only thing I can do right now is to control what I can control right now in my life. And that's my personal responsibility. But what, where the virus came from and where it's going, I really cannot help it too much other than everybody, uh, recommends to stay at home, all those things, wash hands. I agree with all the uh, precautions. So if you're taking precautions, it's great. But I think what, the, what everybody can do right now is to actually help their immune system, to boost their immune system. Mm -hmm. Now, there are four ways to boost your immune system. Obviously, healthy food, and that people stack too much ice cream in the fridge and too many Oreos around the house. That's a tough one right now. That's why my fit, fit, uh, fitness pal, uh, get my husband's book because he tells you step by step how to do that. Number two is sleep. This is the time to sleep, especially kids. You know, I homeschool for a long time and when I started, my kids got up at six and by 7.30 you're sitting at the table and da -da 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 -da. not anymore. My kids can sleep as long as they want and I encourage them to sleep, especially my 12 year old, he's almost 13, getting close to teenage years. I believe the importance of sleep is so, 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 so important that right now, take advantage of that. Sleep is very, very important. Now, another thing is exercise because that helps you with your mood, you know, the hormones that you create during that will help you getting out of depression or sadness you are outside if you go for a walk it's allowed you can go for a walk or hike you can even go nordic skiing that's what we done last weekend you still have options now, if you don't want to go outside then you can just stand up and do exercise at home two days ago best babe 007 on youtube i put a water bottle exercise and i definitely thought of people who want to watch tv and be watch news to, to, I did easy exercises that you can do with a water bottle, two water bottles that will help your muscle tones, like weightlifting, and we relax you and start to get you in the mood of like, oh, maybe this actually did feel good. So that's, that's another important. And then the last one is the stress relief. Like you really need to relieve that stress because as you said it yourself, you know, I'm a stress eater. When I'm stressed, I eat. So these are, these are all together form a healthy lifestyle and, and they are all important and, and, and sometimes a little more important, you know, when you're really stressed and that's meditation or a walk outside or, or anything that makes you happy or focusing, focusing on what you're thankful for. You know, you always read these articles that you can have anger and stress and, and the, and the feeling of, stress, of thankfulness and gratefulness, yeah. uh, um, uh, in your, in your, uh, in yourself. So if, if that's what bothers you the most and that's how you can get off the couch, then you just look around until you find enough things right there in your home that you are thankful for. And if you find enough things, you will, you won't be able to be sad and depressed anymore. Then that, that then you have to take that momentum to get off the couch and, and do the night, next right thing. It's just little things like instead of, okay, where is we going to all die or not die? You say, oh, I'm so thankful for this thing, that this book that is sitting here for a month and now I have time to look into it. And, and I'm so thankful that I have time to look into my child's eyes right now because I don't usually just run around all day long and then at the end we just don't go to bed. Well, and talking about children, for me, it's really changed our rhythm once my son and I decided to do his PE routine because that's what he knows. I that's what he likes. He was doing performance PE. I will tell you the first few times kicked my, you know, <laughs> my behind. It really did. But now we are waking up in the morning. We're saying three things that we are grateful, grateful or thankful for. And then we work out and then we have breakfast together after. So we're not, you know, 
we don't have a side egg after a bowl of cereal um, in the morning. Um, and it just totally changed our day because yes. then we want to do more things. They're out on a bike ride right now and yeah. they would be usually begging once they're on the couch. I feel it's very hard to get them up. But if you never really get them yes. there and oh. if you have we have the grateful, then we have the workout, then we eat and then chores need to be done. And then it's schoolwork. And then only if we have time, we can do other things as their free time and that free time, they can do whatever they want and it's their reward. But most of the time now on free times, they'll go on a bike ride instead because they're not sitting on the couch from first hour in the morning. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I agree with you. You you have to have successful people say you have to have a goal. You always have to have a goal like uh, with, with the kids to do a bunch of, we want to have a healthy, active day where we connect, we learn, we spend some time outside and then you work back from that. Okay, so what is what is health? How do we connect? Like for example, work out in the morning as you said it or read a book together or going on a bike ride in our free time or, or make a healthy salad. It's the same with the weight loss and the self-image it took me a very long time to get to the point where I have a very, very healthy self-image and, and I feel really good of how I look and how I feel and, and how my life is. And you have to have a goal. You have to imagine this is what I would like to look at, like. This is what I would like to feel like. Uh, a lot well, of people and go And teach on them how to cook too because my son has made dinner two nights in a row and not only does he feel great about himself, um, but it really, it changes again, the dynamic at dinner. It's like, oh, it, Lucas is on it tonight. He's making dinner. Teach them how to do dinner while they're home. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And involve them in everything you are doing. That's why in the workout programs I put on uh, and on YouTube a couple of days ago, it's a family workout. So uh, I am there with my kids and we are working out on the water, with the water bottles. And every Wednesday at noon, I'm going to put up another one of where you can work out with your kids. So you you can do healthy and things that you can make good decisions and your kids will start to make good decisions because they see that oh that works you know she's happy she's in shape she's she has energy and that's what we should do too because it seems like that's kind of a, the key to the to being successful so have a goal mm -hmm. and work back from that if you say well, I wait plus have a goal in mind that's what I'm gonna look like and, and then see okay so how, what is the first step to that don't overwhelm yourself you're not gonna look like the you know, the hottest girl on Instagram because first of all, they are uh, airbrushed, you know, second and of all. And it's more about how you feel. Body. How do I want to feel? I want to be able to run exactly. with my kids. I want to be able exactly. to play with my kids. Exactly. I want to be, yes, I agree with exactly. that. Exactly. And a lot of time, you know, people will say, we will say, oh, I want to weigh 120 pounds. And then when they are 120 pounds, they are skinny fat. They are like, oh, I didn't think that this is what it would feel like. I thought I would look like that girl who's 125 pounds. And I just wanted to look like her, but oh, this is actually I did something wrong. That's okay because you had a goal. And now you have questions. Now the question is, oh, okay, so why is this arm so skinny when I thought that the 120 pound will look so good? Then you say, okay, so why, what's wrong? Why did I, why did I do wrong? And then you you adjust your goal a little, and step by step you do it again. But the first step is. I want to look like that, or or I want to connect with my kids, and I want to be a happy family. But the first step is stand up from the couch turn the news off and then do all those things that you know already we have more information available than ever before you, you can google anything you can buy programs and everybody will tell you their smart opinion and the science behind it, it is so much information you just have to know what you want and focus on that not let anything interrupt you and and things that you fail and if you fail like i failed so many times don't worry. That's why we are here. People like me who will tell you, hey, don't do that because that you will fail. So don't even waste your time. Do this instead and you will you will succeed. So it's good to find some mentors. It's good to follow people's advice and programs. And there's so much out there right now. Everybody offers free programs for homeschooling, for the kids, for the adults. Everything you can imagine is right there it by is. your doorstep if you stand up from the couch and turn the TV off because that takes a lot of time. It's fun to watch TV. I love to watch TV. It's so much time that sometimes something has to go for something good to come in. So it's also a time to let things go, let the worry go, let some old habits go and, and uh, be open for the change what's happening right now and, and see 
what's how can I bring the best out of this? What can I do right now in here? So Chilla, I put your website on the notes. So anyone who wants to access your husband book and all the this information Thank can you. access it through your website. If you don't mind, I tagged you in the comments. Please add your YouTube channel so we can have those Wednesdays work out. I think that'd be super fun. I really appreciate your time. I could talk to you all day, but I think if we, keep, if we keep I, it short, shorter than hopefully we can have more um, share of this video. This is what why I'm here and you are here is to spread more positivity and information in the community. So please like and share and then we will talk to you soon. Or maybe we'll touch base in a couple of weeks and see how everybody's doing fitness wise. Hey. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. You are doing a great job with this, with the interviews. And that's what it is about. It's about connecting, inspiring each other and, and still be able to talk, even though uh, everybody's social distancing. So this is wonderful what you are doing. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Well, this was Distinctive Delphine. You guys have a great weekend.